Hi everybody, I'm Matt Lewis with Haggerty and in today's DIY, I'm gonna talk about the basics of using a multimeter. Now when you're looking at multimeters, there's a lot of different options. We've got very small pocket size deals, very expensive professional tools, and then you can get into just the average multimeter. This one here is great because it's got all of the options you're gonna need for checking the electrical system on your automobile. Now a little multimeter like this is available in a lot of different places. You can find them at uh, hardware stores, you can find them at auto parts stores, you can even find them at home improvement stores or anywhere online. An item like this, which is great for the DIY home use, $20, $25, it's gonna do almost everything you need from a day-to-day -day usage. So now that we have our multimeter open, you can see there's lots of options as to what you can test and actually more connections on the front than there are leads that come with it. We're gonna be focusing on DC voltage, ohms or resistance, and amperage. Depending on what we're testing, we're gonna be plugging the leads into these different terminals. Now, we've only got one black terminal on here, so that's obviously going to be our ground lead. First thing we're gonna be working with is voltage, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug it into this one labeled voltage. For the sake of testing voltage, I've got a little battery here hooked up to these leads, and since there's actually electricity at the end of these leads, I put down some cardboard so our metal table doesn't start conducting. So with this multimeter, there are multiple options for voltage. And what it does is it basically moves the decimal point around here. We know that cars are 12 to 15 volts depending on the situation. So our 20 volt max setting is gonna be plenty for what we're working with on the automobile here. You can move it up to 200, which you see just jumps this decimal point, and even to 500, which eliminates the decimal point. And while you gain headroom for voltage, you lose accuracy because you can't see portions of a volt at the 500 volt setting. At 20, we're great. We know we're not gonna exceed 20 volts and we get plenty of accuracy with to the hundredths of a volt. Now, I am gonna warn you that electric cars run super high voltage, enough to be lethal. So if you have an electric or a hybrid, I would advise just taking it to a shop don't mess around with the electrical system on it because it is dangerous. Now, when you're testing voltage on a car, you're gonna remember that this black lead is going to be your negative terminal. That's gonna be the ground. We're gonna go ahead and hook it up to our pigtail here with the black. This red one is gonna be the positive terminal. That we're gonna to wanna to hook up to our positive. And here we see this little battery I have is reading 13.81 volts. Now it's pretty normal for a 12 volt system to actually read higher than 12 volts. A regular car battery is gonna be between 12 and 13 if it's functioning properly with the car off. When the car's running, your charging system kicks in, you might see anywhere from 14 to 15 volts, depending on what your alternator or generator is currently doing. So when we're talking about voltage, what we're actually looking at is the electrical charge difference between the negative terminal of a battery and the positive terminal of a battery or a circuit. A good analogy for that is like water pressure. When you're looking at the water in your home, how much pressure does it have? Next thing we're gonna talk about is amperage. You can consider amperage like the flow rate. So how much water is actually coming through the system. Now for amperage, I am gonna to have to move this terminal over from our voltage setting to our amperage setting, just like this. And I'm gonna to have to swing our dial over to the DC 10 amp setting. This is gonna allow us to measure amperage instead of voltage on this circuit. So when you go to measure amperage on a circuit, you do actually have to disconnect the circuit and put the multimeter in between the power and the load or light in this case. Now I hooked up the red lead to the positive and I'm gonna hook up the black lead to our red lead here, which will complete our circuit and turn the light on pulling just over half of an amp. So we've tested the voltage of our battery, we've tested the amperage of the circuit with the light bulb on. The final setting we're gonna talk about is this ohm or resistance setting. And what that is is it measures how difficult it is for electricity to pass through a circuit. When we're looking at a little piece of wire like this, this is just copper wire, this should be almost zero ohms or zero resistance, meaning it's very easy for electricity to flow through it. So if we go ahead and hook our terminals up here, once this settles, we're at 0.3 ohms. Now this may just be a variance of what the multimeter can, can read because this is a, a fairly inexpensive multimeter. It may be 
this does have a tiny bit of resistance in it, but basically we're looking for a very small number when you're reading something like just a piece of wire. Right here, I've got what is an ignition coil. I believe it's off of a little motorcycle. And measuring across these two points, we're gonna see how easy it is for the electricity to flow from side to side. We hook this up and we see we're about five and a half ohms. Now that's more difficult for electricity to flow than just this piece of wire, but still fairly easy. That's, that's not a lot of ohms. So for the sake of testing all three things we've talked about today, I've gone ahead and made our light bulb broken. This light doesn't function anymore. So we hook power up to it. Oh, there's no light. First thing we'll test is voltage. We've got our voltage set back up. We'll hook up to the negative terminal and positive terminal. Okay, so electricity is getting to this point in the light bulb. Next thing we'll test is amperage to see if that electricity is actually flowing through the light bulb. We'll go ahead and switch that over to amperage, move our terminal over to the amperage terminal. And we remember we put the amperage in line with our circuit. Go ahead and hook this up. It's reading nothing. I know that this circuit is not completing, meaning there's something wrong inside the bulb. The final test we can do is our ohm test. So we'll go ahead and move this back to ohms. We'll put our meter back on ohms. We'll go ahead and hook this up. And it appears to be open. The meter didn't even react. And what that means is there is nothing connecting this wire and this wire. And that's why the bulb's not lighting up. So now we know we're gonna need a new bulb in here because the electricity can no longer flow through it causing it to light. So we can replace this bulb and just see if we can fix it. For the sake of troubleshooting, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually measure the ohms of this light bulb. And the way you do this is these bulbs, this is an 1157 bulb, it's super common for cars. This outside ring here is the negative terminal, and then what you have is two positive terminals. It's called a dual filament bulb. And if you look really close, you can see there's actually two filament sections. Those are what produce the light. We're still on our ohm setting, so we're gonna go ahead and connect to the negative and then probe this positive. It didn't even react when I hooked it up. So there could be a couple of issues. These connectors here that hook the socket to the bulb might be corroded or broken. This outside may lo no longer be grounding properly to our negative terminal. Or really where these wires go in may be broken or kind of anywhere within this circuit it may be broken. We grab a new bulb, we put it in. Now we can use the same ohm test, hook up to our terminals. All right, so we're seeing the numbers responding, which means electricity can flow through this circuit now. And what that means is we have a good bulb and a good housing with good wiring. Now that we fixed it, if we hook our battery up, we have light again. So if you find yourself with a brand new multimeter that you want to play with, you can do it with something as simple as a AA battery. Here we've got a positive terminal labeled. It says it's gonna be 1.5 volts. You can hook that up and play with that. Well, I hope this multimeter DIY was helpful. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and post them below. Make sure to subscribe to our channel so you know whenever we put out a new video, and we'll see you next time.